I'm Sean Holman, and I drive, write, and breathe trucks for a living. With me on this trip is my friend and coworker, Christian Hazel, also a certifiable truck nut. And we just finished getting a tour of the Cerro Gordo ghost town from this guy, Brent Underwood. He bought the place back in 2020. He's been living here alone ever since. Intrigued? Then watch on. Let's back up to the beginning. Anyone who knows me knows that I love using off-roading to connect with history. That's why the Eastern Sierras is one of my favorite places to explore. Before Cerro Gordo was developed into a mining town, the indigenous people knew about silver veins running underneath the mountain. Today, the silver is gone, but Brent has made it his mission to bring the town back to life as a tourist destination and historical site. So we were excited to see what he had done with the place. All right, here we are. What a truck. Hey, Brent, how's it going? Good. Sean Holman. Hey, Sean. Hey, Christian Hazel. Hey, Christian. Thanks for the invite Yeah, up here. welcome to Cerro Gordo. Yeah, it's a Excited beautiful day. Yeah, how was the ride up in the truck? Man, that thing is so awesome. No, <laughs> no problems coming up. Your road's a little washed out down there. Yeah, it could do some work. We've been up here a ton of times off-roading, but okay. we've never stopped in the town, so Ooh. we're super excited to learn more about it. Yeah, I'm glad you did. Uh, I think this is a good place to start. You know, we're standing right now in between the original general store okay. and the original owner of the town's house. Um, the town was established in 1865 as a mining town. Uh, hopefully today we can maybe jump into some mines. Cool. But probably a good place to start is the general store, which is these days is our museum, you know? Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah, let's check it out. We'll, uh, we'll follow you. All right. Whoa. Wow. Yes, this is it. This so, is this cool, awesome. Man. At first this would have been like, where all the miners would have gotten their goods, you know, canned goods, anything like that. Do they have to pay with the uh, company money? Yeah, the company, they get, they company get paid on Friday. Company town. And... Yeah, they try to keep all the money in here. <laughs> yeah. So the front is kind of, it would have been anything from pickaxes to canned goods to all these different things that you see kind of behind us. The back was actually a butcher shop. Oh, so there was oh, like wow. a cool old refrigerator back there. So the miners would have came here, you know, picked up any supplies they wanted, some different things like that. Uh, these days it's our museum. You know, so anything that is found around the property, we throw in here. This is the ore that they were mining here. So the primary ore back in 1865 was Galena. So that's lead and silver. So that's why it's kind of got that heft yeah. to it. Um, and they mined that here for about 20 years. So this was, like I said, back in the day, the butcher shop. These days, a lot of the stuff back here is what I found, you know? So this room kind of has a good place in my heart. So this is actually a map of the whole main union mine here. Oh, okay. So this is where we're gonna go later. It's the top of the um, main shaft. And the reason that they sunk the shaft where they did is they were trying to get access to two different things, the union chimney and the Jefferson chimney. And oh. chimney in this case means like a, a order bang, deposit. Right? Yeah. yeah, an order deposit that starts at the surface and goes down. So this one starts at the surface, it goes over 1,100 feet down. And these are pure Galena. So like every little bit of it was Galena. So they sank the shaft to then go out, right? And then start mining, you know, let gravity do the work. Um, and so eventually they got down to the 900 foot level. They hit a fault. So they sh went off to the sides and then drove some winds down to the 1100 foot. Um, but that was pretty much where it ended. Um, so these days, like the Jefferson chimney, you know, they started mining at the surface. So now it's just this crazy pit that just drops, you know, hundreds of feet from the How surface. How much of those chimneys are left these days? They've, as far as like the ore, yeah, the they, ore. they've gotten like every scrap wow, out of there. They've amazing. done a pretty good job of just getting everything out. Having the opportunity to see and handle some of the artifacts that Brent's found around Cerro Gordo at his museum was an amazing and unique experience. But it was time for us to do what we came up here to do. And that's to see the centerpiece of Cerro Gordo, the Union Mine. Let's go see where the cool stuff came from. I was from. waiting for you guys to say that. All right, well, let's uh, do it. I'm ready if you are. All right, I'll show you the way. All right, so this is the reason that we are all here. This is the main Union mine shaft here at Cerro Gordo. Uh, you are standing on a cage that drops 900 feet straight down. If you can feel it a little bit, it does move <laughs> <laughs> just a bit because it's being supported by that cable. And so this cable so just- that cable's the only thing keep me from that's going it. for 900 that's foot That's it, ride. miners would just slowly take this down you know, to the different levels. The ore would also come up on this. Mm -hmm. You can see the track on there. Oh so yeah. The track would come yeah. right so off of the levels. Basically pull a cart up with it, huh? Mm -hmm. And then roll onto this, roll out right out that way, yeah. and then go out that way. Um, but this is, I mean, to me, 
this is my favorite thing at all of Cerro Gordo because this is. This was the heart and soul of this operation. This is it. This yeah, is the reason for the shafts. Right. Nothing else exists. At one point in time, this was the largest silver mine in California, yeah. and this was the main shaft at the mine. This was basically the the morning commute. This was it. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, so like we still use this all the time. You yeah. know, I was literally going down in this yesterday, and so for me to see the old machinery and still work the old machinery. That old engine still works. Yeah, like, it still works, oh, and wow. it, it just gives you that soul of the place. It gives you a feel of maybe what the miners used to go through. And that uh, big long brake lever and the big springy chair. I mean, yeah. there's, there's a guy sitting there operating levers to make right. sure Wait, that the, the brake shaft, is locked yeah. in, right? Yeah, he, <laughs> I mean, you can jump right here, I think. Yeah, he, I think I'll test that out he now. literally has your life in his hands, you yeah. know? Oh, and wow. so he's looking for any slack in the cable, but uh, it still goes down. It takes about 40 minutes to go down 700 feet. All right, well, uh, as much as uh, I want to see Christian uh, go down <laughs> this mine shaft right now, yes. Why don't we go through the other entrance yes. and uh, we'll check out the zero level. Yes, perfect. All right. This first 20 feet or so might be a little, little bit of a crawl. It's like sitting in front of an AC vent. John, if you get stuck, I'll just give you a high Just push my butt. <laughs> As we got deeper in the mine, we took a pause into this room where Brent explained how the Union Mine was both the biggest and the most infamous in Cerro Gordo. The, the next level will be the 86 level, so 86 feet down, and there's a 200 level. And the 200 level is probably the most infamous level at Cerro Gordo. Uh, back in 1871, there was 30 miners there that overstoped, so they took out too much of the ceiling. Oh, wow. And the level collapsed on them, and they're still there, you know? Oh. All right, so uh, one last question while we're in here in the darkness. I've heard stories that Cerro Gordo is haunted. Mm -hmm. Is it haunted? Depends on who you ask. Okay. Yes. We're asking uh, you. If you're asking yeah. me, <laughs> so prior to buying the town, I was a full non-believer, you know, it's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I did have my one kind of ghost incident, I guess, okay. that led me to believe that maybe, you know, I'm okay. now a skeptic, I'll say. Yeah. And uh, the way I handle it is I feel like there's certain areas of Cerro Gordo that are haunted. I'm not going to say that the town in total is haunted. Okay. I think the ghosts like their areas. Yeah. I like mine. If we keep our own space, then we can coexist. So I don't go mm. where. Nice. I stay over That's here. Fair. Yeah. All right. That's the way uh, I handle it. Obviously, we're going to drive our electric truck home. Yeah. Uh, I hear they don't like the electro uh, interference. And so does that mean they won't be following us home? Uh, or maybe they'll jump in the car and follow us home. So maybe you we home. might we take might a ghost out. That'd be great. All right, well, you guys um, can be the modern day Ghostbusters. I guess we're going to have to uh, <laughs> head out of this thing and, yes. and, and get back in our Rivians. Thanks so much. Um, yeah. We'll try and take some ghosts home with us. And that way, you don't have to worry about it anymore. That would be amazing. I would Appreciate that. All right, so uh, which way out? I'm gonna go this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you guys think? That was pretty awesome. That yeah. was crazy. Yeah. I didn't think I'd ever, I'd ever see like a, a raw mine like that. Yeah, I've been in the tourist ones mm -hmm. where everything's all kind of safe and there's lighting. But hey, that what are you was, saying yeah, about it? That was, that was super <laughs> cool, that was super cool. Yeah. And you know, you felt like you were really back in the day. Thanks for showing us yeah. uh, your backyard. Uh, why don't we hop in the Rivian and we'll show you what we do. I'm ready, let's do it. All right, to Cerro Gordo. <laughs> <laughs> That was an amazing day up Cerro Gordo. Yeah, I had a blast. Your driving is excellent. I'll start there. Oh, I appreciate uh, some that. Some of those drifts were uh, clenching. I'm impressed. That was a lot of fun today. So what I would say to somebody who might be hesitant but curious about exploring a place like Cerro Gordo is learn about it and get out there. Do it before it's too late because there's so many stories to be told and we're only here for so long. So for me personally, I'm gonna keep going out there. I'm gonna keep finding these pieces of history and I hope I see you out on the trail doing the same. <laughs>